This episode of Slash Tracks Action News is brought to you by Into the AM. Hey Slashaholics, before today's episode of Slash Tracks Action News, I want to tell you about our sponsor, Into the AM. They've got so many amazing products, just like this shirt I'm wearing. This graphic tee right here is comfortable, shrink resistant, and has an amazing design. My favorite design from the whole site, Game Over. I also really enjoyed this design right here, Better Days. But you'll find your own favorite design and product by going to their website and checking out the whole catalog of stuff they have like this. And they've got so much more than that. They've got everything to cover any of your apparel needs. And right now, you can bundle three of these amazing graphic tees together for $60. Just 60 bucks for three of these amazing, comfortable, shrink-resistant shirts. You can also get three basic tees right now for $49.95. Just as comfortable, just as shrink-resistant, just as amazing. And you can also get 10% on top of that taken off if you use our special link into the am.com forward slash slash tracks. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you Into the AM for sponsoring our content. And now enjoy tonight's episode of Slash Tracks Action News. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number eight of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. Josh, we got some big news uh, tonight. Big news. Uh, yeah, this is huge news, actually. Uh, tonight's episode, uh, we are being brought to you by a really great company called Into the AM. Yes, Into the AM. They make some killer, killer shirts. Comfortable as hell. Uh, shrink resistant, throwing it out there, very comfy. I love my game over design here, love it. And you can go to Into the AM and you can get three graphic tees for sixty bucks. And these shirts, by the way, just uh, just throwing it out there, these are really like breathable and they're comfortable and they're making me look buffer than I have any right to be right now. This tank top is phenomenal. This Moon Man design right here, this is the creme de la creme, my friend. Look at the vibrant colors on this. Yeah, I love it. I love, like, it's kind of, every shirt kind of has a rainbow on it, you know, allies and everything. I, I really love the design. Uh, they've got hats. They've got underwear, pants, shorts, everything, man. And like I said, three graphic tees for 60 bucks. Man, that's, uh, that's a pretty good deal. And it's not only good on your wardrobe, Josh, it's also good on your wallet. What do you think about that, pal? Oh, yeah, and you want to uh, tell people how they can get an even better deal into the AM? Ah, yes. Just by watching this show and being a member of the Slashaholics Nation, go ahead and look right down below for a very special deal for you guys. Josh, why don't you tell them about that deal? Yeah, go to intotheam.com forward slash slash tracks, like it says below, exactly as it says, and you will get 10% off your purchase on top of all the amazing deals they already have there. And I want to say thank you to End of the AM for partnering with Slash Tracks, the Slash Tracks Network. We're glad to have you. We love your merchandise. Cannot wait to get more. This is so comfortable. I'm going to rush over and buy some more when we're done tonight. 
Oh, absolutely. So, and it's, it's starting to become summer season, man. Like yeah. tank tops like this, like I work out every day. So this is going to be a lifesaver. And I have to ask you one more question. Did you say 10% off with our code uh, by yes. par- partnering with them on top of the deals that they already have going on? Yes. With the bundles and the link, Whoa. you'll get, you'll get the bundle deal and the 10% off. So please check it out wow. guys. Yeah. Check that out. That's amazing. Josh, are you ready uh, to finish up the business and get into the business of the show? Let's do it. All right, dude. So we're going to start off uh, tonight's episode with uh, mean comment and nice comment of the week. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we went from the the high, high of being sponsored uh, with a great company to being dissed on uh, YouTube. So let me crack open my crystal Pepsi in celebration of anything (laughs) being in before I before I hear the mean comment. Okay, that's that is a the fact that he's drinking a crystal clear Pepsi right now. in celebration of being partnered with into the am is a big deal because the only other time he drinks it is at like bar mitzvahs weddings quinceaneras anything like that josh doesn't josh won't he he holds on to those like they're memories from his childhood okay so this is a big deal yeah Uh, do you want good comment or do you want a nice comment or mean comment first i think we did mean comment first last time so let's do nice one first this time Okay, we actually have two nice comments because uh, they were both so nice. I had to, I had to take both of them. Okay. All right. First nice comment. This is from Salee Silik. Uh, hilarious duo. New fan! Exclamation point. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Salee. I didn't know one comment. person could be a duo, but thank you so much for that comment. That warms my heart. <laughs> you're you're starting the 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 you're starting the subtle. The subtlety of a wrestling heel turn right now. That comment right there. Pretty soon you're gonna. There's gonna be more comments like that, and pretty soon in a future episode, I'm gonna turn my back and you're gonna waffle me with like a chair or something. No, you do the barbershop. Barber yeah. shop. <laughs> you're gonna like super kick me, and then I'm gonna jump my own body through Brutus's window. <laughs> a future story. I will tell you how I became a heel in wrestling, and it, it, it's hilarious and embarrassing. Uh, but what's our other uh, funny comment? All right, nice, nice comment. Sorry. That's all right. Other nice comment. I hope you two get paid. Great entertainment. Uh, Amir, Amir Adov. Uh, so I'm going to say, hey, hoping, wishing came true because we are getting paid now. So yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Positive mental outlook. Uh, PMO. So thank you so much. He wished it into existence, just like you wished that hair of yours into existence, Josh. And mm-hmm. uh, here we are. Looking good. Uh, every episode we do, your hair is just a little bit longer, man. I would love to mark. Can, can we mark it somehow? Can you somehow mark where it is right now? And then in the future, can we see how long it's grown since you yeah, marked I'll it? Yeah, I'll do like a growth chart, but like, you know, like a roller or something. And I'll yeah. Have, I'll have my wife take a picture. It's her birthday okay. today. So happy birthday to my amazing, beautiful, most beautiful woman in the world, Beth. I love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Beth. Thank you so much for letting me play with Josh once or twice a week. <laughs> Beth, can Josh come out and play? It's really important. We've got a podcast to do. Please, Beth. Uh, let's do mean comment of the week. Let's finish up this segment real quick. Okay, before we get right. to the mean. Oh, okay, you better you get another also, crystal clear out. <laughs> you can also support us. Uh, by going to patreon.com forward slash 80 slasher librarian down below. There's the link. You can support us there too. And you'll get some great bonuses. We're going to be doing some live Q and A's on there. Uh, The slash tracks review show is going to be on the Patreon first for at least a week or two before it drops on YouTube when we start that show. So there's going to be some great bonuses there and you'll be helping us out and uh, keeping the show going. With that yeah. being said, <laughs> oh, go ahead. Well, I want to piggyback off that really quick. We have some amazing guests lined up already for the review show. We have three or four guests already lined up, uh, surprise guests. And I think you'll be really surprised, and I think you'll be really pleased uh, when you get to see who's going to be on the episodes. Um, also, uh, Josh, as far as, like, you know, Patreon and all that other stuff, we are definitely kicking the can around about merch, so I've been contacting, I've been contacting graphic, uh, you know, people that do designs and logos and stuff. And uh, it's not promised. It's not a for sure thing. 
but we could possibly be having some merch designed by the man who created Axe Cop himself. He's worked on Teen Titans Go. Ethan Nicole might be designing the Slash Tracks logo. So I would love a coffee cup, mug, like a coffee mug. Yeah, like a co- coffee cup, sweater, or something, maybe a tank, whatever, anything. Just something that, you know, says we were here, that we existed. <laughs> and um, something that really proves we exist is critics. So, um... What's right, our mean, negative comment? <laughs> all right. Mean com- I'm going to stop trying to sell stuff. Mean comment of the week. Uh, this is in regards to Slash Tracks episode number 27, Halloween 5. The Rip Pod- Show. The it's Rip a Rip show. show. It's not the podcast. It's our Rip Show. Uh, homage? Question mark? This is horrible. Slash Trash. From, <laughs> Fu- from Fooey. His name is Fooey. He's, he's like Madonna. He's got one name. You know, you know who I think that was? I think that was... Uh... Crow from Mystery oh, Science yeah. Theater. The yeah. robot. <laughs> yeah. He's just pissed because we haven't featured him on any episodes. Fooey. Yeah, he uh, Crow is Crow the robot from Mystery Science Theater is mad that we're doing a riff show, so he's trying to take us down. Uh starting with the comment section. I like couldn't even be mad at that guy for that comment because it's actually pretty funny. Uh it's slash trash. <laughs> you I, don't, guys I don't think suck. I don't think Tom um the other robot, you know, is trying to take us down. I Tom think it's just Servo. Crow. Yeah, Tom Servo. I think he's cool. Um, but uh, it's funny that they sit, brought up Slash Trash. Because <laughs> isn't that isn't that what we were going to call the Lifetime Reviews or something like that? No, Trash Tracks. And we're trash def- Tracks. They, yeah, well, they, Trash they were Tracks. Close. Um, I, I was like, when I read that comment, I'm like, okay, well, tell me how you really feel, Fooey. How do you really feel about the show? <laughs> Don't sugarcoat it. Just lay it all out there. How do you feel? Do, you, do we suck? Huh? Well, that one stung so bad. I think yeah. I'm going to have to quit. Game over, man. Game <laughs> over. It's over, man. Before it even started. Finally got sponsored and the show's over. Where Our feelings are too hurt. But you know what will make our feelings uh, peak up just a little bit better? Let's get into some fun facts. Let's do it. All right. First fun fact of the night. Until 1956, French students were allowed uh, oh, were allowed to drink half a liter of wine or beer uh, uh, up to the age of under... Be- oh, my God. Until <laughs> okay. French students could be served alcohol by teachers uh, under the age of... Like, if they were under 14, they could drink in class. How about that? I butchered that. Wow. No, you were just speaking French is what we're going to tell everybody. Good Lord. Uh, that, that, that wasn't a flub up. He was speaking French. Yeah. Um, you, just, no. you just didn't catch it because he's so fast at it. I know. Wow. Great. Until 1956. So students could drink in class. You know, basically. here in Arkansas, whenever I was in school, if you wanted to get drunk before class, you just went out to the teacher's van, you know, in between classes. You yeah. Know, smoke a cigarette with them, have a beer. Really? No, no. But have it, a sip it was of hooch. Close. It was pretty. I live. I live. I went to school. No lie, we. I lived in a town at the time of 475 people. So this was backwoods Arkansas, as redneck as you can get. So I'm pretty sure we had some teachers that were, uh, you know, drinking you, a little bit to get to the you, day. Dude, can you imagine the teachers' uh, meetings, like in their little? What is it called? Like they have a little they, an area where they can go dr- have lunch and like teachers' smoke lounge. Cigarettes. So in the teachers' lounge, what are they talking about in 1956 or 1957, the year after it's outlawed? Man, teaching was so much easier when we get those little bastards all drunk. <laughs> Calm them down. It's like, hey, Billy, uh, Billy, would you shut up? Come up here and have a couple sips of hooch. I need you to focus on what I'm trying to teach today. Let's yeah, get that little shit year, drunk. Last year, we could give them wine and get them to shut up, and now we have to listen to them wine every day. Yeah, it was so much different when we could just get them liquored up, and then they'd actually have to focus on what we're doing. <laughs> Uh, Josh, did you think were back then, man? It's just, it's insane. Some of the laws that are still in the books from years and years and years ago, that just were never, <laughs> they, they, didn't, they don't enforce them anymore, but they never really took them out of the books. Yeah. Yeah. Or abolished them. It's, it's nuts. We could do a whole episode just on crazy laws that are still laws to this day, uh, from decades ago. Uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, actually my brother holds the record. For the amount of times being spanked at our grade school, 
Uh, yeah, he holds the record. He was spanked three times in the same day. And this is like early 80s, like mid 80s uh, at Bangor Elementary School in North Bend, Oregon. Uh, you could still be spanked. So my brother gets in trouble, gets sent to the principal's office. Uh, they call my mom. They say, this is what Aaron did. Uh, the spoiler himself. He must have been spoiling something in class for all the other kids or something that day. But they're like, hey, uh, you know, Mrs. Vanover, can we spank Aaron? And she's like, oh, absolutely. Go ahead, spank him. So he gets spanked. He goes back to the class, and the kid who told on him uh, for whatever he did, which led to the first spanking, Aaron starts verbally, like, getting after the kid who told on him. He gets in trouble again. They send him back to the office again, right? And he gets spanked again, right? So then... Uh, he, he wasn't spanked the third time. He was spanked twice at school. So they had to call mom again and said, Aaron's freaking out on the kid who turned him in for the first spanking. So he got spanked again. So then when Aaron got home later that day, uh, for all the trouble he caused my mom, my mom spanked him. He got spanked three times in the same day, dude. Two from the principal, one from our mother. I got a, I got, I got a question from the classroom here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was your brother, is your brother, or has your brother ever been a masochist? <laughs> he's all don't spank me Ooh, i don't love it. it oh no i'd hate for what i'm doing right now to result in a paddling <laughs> that'd just be in a that'd just be a misfortunate you know unfortunate uh did you know josh that the most searched word on bing's search engine is google really that's yeah, ironic I was I was watching the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt the other day. Yeah, it's got the most catchy theme song, by the way. It's like the only show that I watch, I binge watch that I don't skip through the intro because I actually like it. But uh, somebody, uh, she's uh, I don't know anybody who's never seen Kimmy Schmidt. It's about a woman who was like kidnapped at fifteen, and this is a sitcom, by the way. And she was kept in a bunker until she was like thirty, and she was rescued. So she's still got, like, the mentality of a middle schooler, you know, and she's trying to adjust to the new world, like the Internet, the gadgets, the way everything's moved on, trying to be be an adult when she's still a kid at heart. And somebody tells her about Google, and she freaks out about how people can just Google her. And she's like, wait, go ogle. I should have put that together a long time ago. And I was like, I've never put that together. It's go ogle. Me neither. Is that why it's called that? Is it? I don't know. We need to I don't know out. either. I don't Go know either. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. You just blew. So, if my head, like if we did an animation right now, it just exploded. I had, that's, yeah, you might be right. Huh. Um, all right. So 6% of Americans, Josh, think that they could actually beat a grizzly bear in a fight. Oh, yeah. 6%. Yeah, here's oh, another one. This just huh? hold on. We, we we're getting we're getting the breaking news here. Six percent of people have just died. Uh, back to you, Alex. Uh, yeah, that's the remember the old school UFC back when they didn't have weight limits and like a uh, sumo guy could wrestle like a jiu-jitsu guy or like uh, whatever like a fifty pound a you know, hundred pound guy could fight a five hundred pound guy. Mm-hmm. It's like Dana White's like and in this corner. A 700-pound starving grizzly bear versus the 80s slasher librarian, Josh LaRue. <laughs> and the match started, and it's over. <laughs> hey, to piggyback, to piggyback on that fun fact, Josh, did you know that grizzly bears bite with a force of over 8 million pascals, which is enough to crush a bowling ball? Isn't that how fast the uh, Millennium Falcon could go or something? No, it was like, par- par that was like parsecs or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, and it was the Millennium Falcon was supposed to be a hoopty, by the way, right? It was supposed to be a, a rusted, you know, a bunch of bolts or something, the way they describe it, but it's the fastest freaking thing in the universe or whatever. And parsecs are act- is actually a measurement of distance, not a speed. <laughs> okay, so, so they just... <laughs> okay, so they just play. They just assume that everybody that watched that film was just ignorant and stupid. Yeah, not a super geek like me. Oh man, well you figured it out. What was it? Star Wars came out in seventy seven. 
So what is it? 87, 97, So like 25, 45 years later, you figured that out? <laughs> or did Han, Han shot first, for sure. He, he did shoot first. I just saw an interview where they asked uh, Harrison Ford who shot first. And he said, I don't give a shit. He said, I don't give a shit. I don't care. Really? <laughs> don't, don't care. Yeah, he's like, I don't care. Just kidding. Yeah, oh, no. okay. He didn't actually say, I don't give an S-H-I-T. It was very close to what you just said. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, it, it, it. literally, I don't care. Um, I had them kill me off. That was part of the agreement to come back. <laughs> I had to die. Um, check this out. The U.S. government has had a plan to collect taxes in the event of nuclear war since 1989. I believe that, especially with what's going on right now. They're doing nuclear drills over in Russia. Yeah, but how are you going to collect taxes from people that are holed up in bomb shelters or <laughs> or dead? How are you going to collect taxes from people that are dead? What's the plan there? I don't know. They've already got the grizzly bear fighter ta- uh, tax, so I guess this is just something to add on top of it. Yeah, what the U.S. government planned for to collect taxes in case of death by grizzly bear fights? <laughs> like, what what was their plan there? <laughs> that guy can't, we can't allow that fight to happen. Oh, why, U.S. government? Because you care about human health and that guy's uh, livelihood? No, we can't let him die from that grizzly bear because we need his tax money. Why are you, what are you, crazy, you dumb son of a bitch? We need to do nuclear taxes because we're only getting like 6% of the people paying their grizzly bear taxes. You know, we're not making enough. Would you rather be killed uh, by a nuclear blast or by a grizzly bear? Nuclear blast, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you don't even know it's coming at that point. Yeah. Like, yeah, you don't even know. Like, you don't know you're dead. Um, and you might leave a really cool shadow. We uh, need to be careful because we're talking about scary stuff. And certain people that talk like this are friends with people on other news shows yeah. whose job is literally to scare old people. So any old people watching, old, I mean, we're old, but older, grizzly bears and nuclear grizzly bears <laughs> It's not Nuclear, wait a minute, nuclear grizzly bears yeah, are they're not coming from? for you. I mean, I mean, if I was a certain Fox News host, I could be like, are there nuclear grizzly bears? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just asking questions. But man, if there are, that's what something I would want to know. Wouldn't you? Man they bear be pig. For you right now. <laughs> man bear pig versus nuclear grizzly bear. <laughs> well, that's what the news has become, just... It could be coming for you <laughs> if you don't vote this way or that way. Tonight on Slash Tracks Breaking News, nuclear grizzly bears, are they stalking you? Do they want to kill you when you sleep? More at 11. I'm looking forward to this thumbnail. Uh, so, <laughs> the United States is the world's largest exporter of sperm. I believe that. So, uh, and and uh, coincidentally, the largest exporter of uh, data, um, storage space, uh, because of the sperm. <laughs> you would have had to watch our last episode to understand that joke. It's called a callback. Yeah. Um, wh- okay. So sperm probably has to be kept at a certain temperature to be effective, right? Yeah, like negative 27-something or something. Where? How are they – how are they shipping it out? Are they putting it like, are they on like, are they in refrigerators? Right. How's that work? And is this, is the supply chain problem affecting the sperm exportation? I don't know, man. Like we're low on baby formula, but we got a hell of a lot of sperm. I got a lot of questions. I got a lot of questions. That's something that I never resulted to when I was like really broke. I never donated sperm and I never donated blood, but I definitely crossed my mind more than once. I, or those health surveys. There were definite moments where I'm like, man, if I don't pay my cell phone bill this like right now, it's going to be shut off. I could eat. <laughs> I could easily go donate some blood or rip a beat to a penthouse right now and take care of this problem. But I just never you didn't do that and get the wrong one at the wrong place. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're, why are you pulling your junk out right now? You're supposed to be pulling your arm out. You're donating blood, you dummy. Oh, sorry. I was so, I was so excited. I thought that I was going to get paid. you take this, though? Yeah. I'll give you a good deal. Yeah. What's a, what do you pay for two for one? You get some plasma, some blood, and some semen from, from Alex today. What's the deal there? The trifecta. Um, you doing a sleep study? 
Uh, let's see how the uh, let's see how me masturbating affects my sleep pattern. Uh, do I get paid twice for that? What's the deal there? Um, I'll tell you what what I it, what, like. I can't sleep at night, Josh, when I'm thinking about nuclear grizzly bears. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's gonna keep me up now. Um, let's get into the last fun fact of the show. Okay. All right, Josh. Did you know that female bed bugs don't have vaginal openings? So males actually have to stab the females in the abdomen with their penises. Is that a true, that's a true story? Yes. Wow. None of these are And lies. I thought, I thought there was freakier stuff going on, in, uh, going on beds across the world, but that, that tops it. That tops it. There's not a porno in the world that tops that. Um, that's scary. That's very scary. Female bud bed bugs need to seriously like if they're gonna date a male bed bug, they better like like his family. They better like how he treats her. They better like the presents he brings her. They better like everything about that male bed bug because they're fully committing to being stabbed in the admin, abdomen with his little bed bug penis. That's a big commitment. He better have good precision. You know, I, if you get, if you get like a nearsighted bed bug or something. <laughs> She's dead. <laughs> she's dead. Um, she's dead. She's like, uh, or no, he's like, here I come. I'm coming in hot. Oh, I'm a bed bug. Oh, ready to do my business. And she's like, you better see that target, that big bullseye. I pre- like I painted on my bed bug stomach. You better not miss you son of a bitch. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This is the story tonight. Wow. And we just got canceled. We just got canceled. Yep. And, <laughs> Before we go into our next segment, check out these great products, just like the ones we're wearing, from our sponsor, Into the AM. Check it out. It's awesome. That's some awesome stuff. You should really check it out. And don't forget about that discount, 10% off using our link. So what's up next, brother? All right, we're going to get into your favorite, favorite, absolute favorite topic of the night. We are going to get into Slash Tracks Sports. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I know you're waiting with bated breath, man. Just waiting anxiously like a nuclear grizzly bear was going (laughs) to come in and attack you. Uh, all right. Well, we actually have a nuclear grizzly bear warning. I'm going to have to set this one out and take shelter. So go ahead. No, you're good. Go ahead. Can you imagine if um, it said, like, ch- like on TV, you go to a news network, and it says, chances of nuclear grizzly bear attack, and it has a percentage, like forest fires? Like Jurassic or World Dominion. Is, if the dinosaurs are taking over the world, do they have, like, Tyrannosaurus warnings or Velociraptor watches, you know? I have no idea, but that would have came in handy for Newman in the first Jurassic Park. Uh, <laughs> he could have used one of those warnings for They're sure. Finally, bring it back to the spitting dinosaurs. At least that's going to be fun. The Dilophosaurus that the will be that cool. killed him. Hey, his shaving I... can. His shaving can is going to play a part in this movie. What the shaving cream can? What about like it? Like a flash. There's going to be a flashback to, like, this guy, bad guy that was trying to open up his own Jurassic Park. Yeah. But didn't have the technology. Apparently went and found, had a tracker on it somehow, I guess, in 1993. And he got, and he's been making dinosaurs this whole time, too, and we just didn't know about it. <clears throat> Apparently that's, like, a side story. It's going to go back to the first movie. So, Dude. I'm actually I, excited about that. I just saw a really crazy fact about Jurassic Park, the first movie that came out in 93. Were you aware that Laura Dern was 23 when that movie was released? People used to look <clears> older, <throat> and I'm telling you. Uh, like, nowadays, a 23-year-old looks like they're 13. Back then, Laura Dern looked like she was, like, in her mid to late 30s. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. It's like, no. I'm telling you, people don't look as old now as they did then. Uh, either that or it's just because we're seeing the world differently, but, like, I'll see like a 25 year old person now. Or okay, here's for exist for exist. I'm speaking in French too. For example, the first season of Roseanne. Roseanne was supposed to be like 33 years old, and Dan was 34 or 35. 
they look like they were in their forties, you know, and it's just yeah, that's crazy, you, man. Twenty three years old. You didn't really pick good examples for people that like uh, they weren't really the model of physical health. <laughs> uh, yeah, can you imagine these two overweight people that like drink on every episode and they're like down with the lobo every day? Like, uh, yeah, but they should have still looked younger. I mean, not they they they, they looked like they were in their forties. I just didn't. I, can't believe they were our age you know what i mean yeah i was teasing nicole my girlfriend uh we were watching this movie called silver bullet it's like with Corey haim and uh he's it's a, a kid Will- yeah it's a stephen it's king a movie it, yeah gary Busey's in it a bunch of a bunch of people are in it and uh there's a couple of characters in the film where they're like they look really old and i'm like yeah nicole how old do you think that guy is and she's like oh he's probably in his 60s and i'm like nope that dude is 31 years old, <laughs> but but it was just kind of like what we're talking about right now, yeah, like how people look crazy. so much older. Um, oh, I, wait. Uh, we got a weather update. A nuclear grizzly NATO has just struck the East Coast. That's so, not good. No, that's, that's not, not good. good at all. Oh, hey, I also have an update on your update. Uh the nuclear, the nuclear grizzly NATO, uh, the the people who have created that monster have just contacted Tara Reid and Ian Ziering's publicists and agents to see if they can star in the ca- catastrophic worldwide event. Oh, I've got an update to your update on my update. Oh, this is scary, scary stuff, folks. The nuclear grizzly NATO has just spawned six sequels. And they're all available on the Lifetime Network or the Discovery Channel or the History Channel. You can check them out. You can also check out our commentary of them on Slash Trash. Come, coming soon uh, to a computer near you. <laughs> uh, Josh, first sports story of the night. All right. last. Well, this is like a couple of weeks ago, actually. The Cincinnati Reds were no hit. Or Excuse me. The Cincinnati Reds no hit. So they threw a no-hitter against the Pirates two weeks ago. But the no, the Reds still managed to lose the game 1-0. to zero. Uh, they, they threw a no-hitter. Does that mean lost. they didn't hit the ball? Oh, they walked somebody all the way to home? The Pirates, the Pirates didn't get a hit the entire game, but the Reds still lost. And you're really close to, to why. The Pirates scored on a bases-loaded fielder's choice in the eighth inning. So a fielder's choice is when a batter uh, makes contact, but the fielder ground like picks the ball up and he gets to decide who he wants to get out. So he didn't make the right choice, and the guy from third scored. So it, it didn't count as a hit. The guy scored though. Does that make so sense? So the three pe- the loaded bases was from walking though. Oh, walks or hits. yeah, walks or bean balls. So oh. they threw a no. So sometimes it's deceptive when you hear of a no hitter because you're like, wow, that's really impressive. No, no actual hits in the whole game. But they could throw a no hitter uh, and still bean the living hell out of the entire team the whole game. They could walk everybody. Uh, airs galore. There's a tons of tons of things that can happen. So those headlines are kind of deceptive, but it's still really interesting because that that doesn't happen very often. Like once every 20 years, does a team get no hit and lose? That's yeah. bizarre, you know, that, or, and still not win the game. It's bizarre. Um, One of my favorite things about baseball is, is, is when the game is over. I knew, I knew you were going to say that. You, you mean when the game's over? One of my favorite things about baseball is going to the concession stand before the game and getting my popcorn and my hot dogs and my Sundays and the baseball helmet and stuff. That's and a, your a nuclear real treat. grizzly repellent, repellent. Do nuclear grizzly bears attend a lot of baseball games? <laughs> Well, you got to have the – it's it's the, the nuclear grizzly bat repellent, you know. Yeah. Okay. It's on Batman's uh, utility belt. Oh, dude, I just saw a Photoshop image that I wanted to share with you, but I did. I don't know why I didn't send it to you. It's like it, – it's the movie Jaws, and, like, all the guys are in the boat. And it's like this movie would have lasted 15 minutes if this had happened. And it shows Batman with some shark repellent. Dude, He's in the Batman. boat. Yeah, he's in the – I thought that was really funny. It's awesome. It's like Jaws in 15 minutes. Here you go. It's over. Um, all right. So this is a story, and this is really interesting to me because I'm really critical of today's uh, professional athletes. I think they're soft, and I think that if they get an opportunity not to play or take a night off, they'll do it because they're making millions and millions of dollars, and they're babies, whatever. Um, in 1980, 
Boston Celtics player Gerald Henderson played an NBA game wearing a jaw brace after he broke his jaw in a game the night before. He broke his jaw the previous night in a game. The That's next, good. dude, the next game, there's a photo. He's got a full jaw brace on his face and he's just balling out in an NBA game, dude. That If somebody broke their jaw in an NBA game now, yeah. they'd be they'd be out for the season and they'd be debating if they're going to be out for next season. And they'd, <laughs> they'd be, be like, they'd be like picking a charity for broken jaws to represent. It'd be a train wreck, dude. You wouldn't hear. I, so there's this guy named Ben Simmons. Uh, for the, he played for the Philadelphia 76ers and he got traded to the Nets because he refused to play because they were highly critical of him in the playoffs two years ago. They're like, he wasn't ready to play. He wasn't shooting free throws well. He's, so he just pulled a complete diva move, Ben Simmons, and said, I'm not going to play for you guys. You're going to trade me. And he's also famous. He's world famous for like, if he gets injured, he's out for a really, 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 really long time. Okay. So he got traded to the 76ers this year. He didn't play one, or he got traded to the Nets, excuse me, from the 76ers. He didn't play one minute. Not a minute, dude. They traded for a guy who didn't even play because he was coming back off an injury. He didn't play a second because he was setting out. And then when he came, when he got traded, he didn't play because he was still claiming he was injured, dude. And they were in the playoffs about ready to get eliminated. He still didn't play. And he still, he was still, he still made millions, probably. Still made millions. So, but what I was going to say is someone on Twitter said, if, Ben Simmons was Gerald Henderson. Gerald Henderson's the guy who had the face brace the, for his broken jaw. They're like, Ben Simmons would have been out. He would have retired that night. He would have been out for the rest of his career. That's it. I've decided this isn't the sport for me. <laughs> I'm done. I'm out forever for a decade with a broken jaw. Can, um, I, be a, can I be a narcissist and make that story about me somehow? <laughs> it's your show, sure. Okay. I'm going to be a narcissist for a second. No. Uh, I told everybody on the show and you about the night that I lost. The greatest moment in my wrestling history was losing the main title because of the way we pulled it off. Yeah. The night, the night that I won the, the belt was a championship tournament, and I won the tournament. But in match number three of four, I was doing a back suplex. And the guy folded, and he hit the side of my nose. And, like, the tip of my nose was touching over here. Like, it was broke. He broke my nose. Yeah. And I couldn't quit because I was winning the tournament. I would have blown my shot, right? So I literally had to suck it up and just take it and pop it back over straight. Yeah. And, I mean, it was a gusher. I gushed, but I finished the match. And, uh, yeah, I didn't retire. I didn't, I didn't take six months off. I didn't blow my tournament. I was going to get that belt, damn it. But just imagine having your nose touching your, you know, your, it, ugh, just, I did it and I still, I still feel it when I think about it. I've never, uh, some people stuff. <laughs> I've never broken a bone ever that I know of knock on wood. I've never, especially not a nose break, but I've, I've seen athletes do kind of something similar to what you described. There's a there's a video of Kobe Bryant, the former Lakers, you know, legend, you know, R.I.P. Kobe. He um, there's a there's a there's a video clip of him on the sideline and he dislocated his one of his fingers or whatever. Yeah, he goes to the sideline and th- this is like an injury that like it's on his shooting hand, dude. Like it, you're out. You're done. He yeah. goes to the trainer. They pop his finger right back in and he goes right back on the court. But you can see the the moment when they pop it back in. His face looks like he got attacked. By a nuclear grizzly bear. Yeah. Yeah. I've had my knee relocated uh, after a wrestling match. It does not. I can't even imagine. Oh, I don't want to think about it. No, it sounds yeah. horrible. It sounds yeah. horrible. Um, the thing would probably be even more painful than a knee because a kneecap at least has some movement to it. Yeah. Fingers like. Finger, it, uh-uh. Yeah. yeah if your yeah. finger's out, it's out. And yeah. it, whenever, whenever you see people with broken fingers or dislocated fingers or stuff, they're always just like totally sideways they're just to- totally the wrong way it's crazy um let's get into the last sports story of the evening okay all right cincinnati reds we're going back to cincinnati cincinnati reds outfielder tommy fam was recently suspended last week after slapping giants outfielder jock peterson across the face so he slapped him uh during the pregame warm-up uh stuff um 
and people wanted to know like why did he slap him in the in the warmups? It was it was literally like the Chris Rock Will Smith thing. He just like they're talking in the outfield and they're not on the same team and Tommy Pham just slaps Jock Peterson right across the face. Well, the slap was actually uh, caused by uh, an altercation or a misunderstanding or something that happened during one of their fantasy football leagues in the off season. <laughs> yeah. Ta- I thought Jock- you were going to tell me he had some barbecue so good. He had to slap, slap his, slap his mama. No dude. Um, they, so Tommy Pham and Jock Peterson were in the same fantasy football league and Jock Peterson like made a, a roster move. He put, he picked up a player uh, and stashed him on his uh, DL. So he picked up a player uh, put him in a disabled spot uh, so he could use him later. So a good player, oh. yeah, a good player to use later. And uh, Tommy Pham, I guess, thought that that was against the league rules or something, and he took umbrage to that, and uh, he had been stewing on it since football season ended months ago and decided to slap him in the outfield before the game. And he was suspended for, like, three games, dude. And he just full-on said, yeah, I slapped him because of fantasy football. Now I know the real reason Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. It was fantasy Oscars. Yeah, he, he fantasy fantasy Oscars. He's like, yeah. you weren't supposed to win. You, I had, I picked somebody else. You ding dong. <laughs> hey, speaking of the Will, what you just brought up, I just saw a story today. Uh, that's not in the rundown. Jada Pinkett Smith, who is basically the reason, kind of, that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock to begin with because he was defending her honor. Uh, she's calling for them to squash the beef and to have a truce. She finally spoke up about it. Do you yeah. believe that before it's squashed, Chris Rock should get to slap Will Smith across the face once? He should slap Will Smith across his bank account. He should sue the living piss out of him and slap his bank account balance. I love the video afterwards where Chris Rock is like, I could have, mm, uh, and then he moves on, you know. Um, that that like um, that whole incident was almost like a wrestling angle because it turned Will Smith heel in an instant, and it made Chris Rock the ultimate babyface. He just took it. He just took the slap. didn't didn't sell it at all, uh, and went on with his with the show. He was kind of like the very next line when he's introducing the next thing. He sounded like me trying to introduce the alcohol segment. Uh, fun fact: just tongue tied completely. But he did great. He went right into his next thing. Didn't sell the slap. Will Smith, on the other hand, looked like he was going to... He just saw a nuclear grizzly bear heading his way. He looked like he was having a hard time, Josh. And he knew he was one of the 6% that had to fight it. You know, so... Um. Uh, do you? Th- what do you think, man? You think you can take that nuclear grizzly bear even though they can uh, chew bowling balls? Like no, a piece of I gum? Can't. I can't do it. Well, he, he he said something about your wife's hair. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have to fight it, then. Going to have to fight that grizzly bear that can it's chew. going down. Dude, hey, favorite piece of gum growing up. What was your favorite piece growing up? Uh, the Dr. Pepper gum that had a little bit of Dr. Pepper in the middle of it. Do you remember I, that? I kind of remember that a little bit. Yeah, you, you so. They had big re- red flavor, too, by the way. Ha. <laughs> that's rich kid gum, dude. Dr. Pepper flavored gum. Gonzo we had, great. Gonzo great. We had my favorite was Fruit Stripes gum, but oh, it we yes. it was it, absolutely delicious. But the problem with it is it would be the best piece of gum you've ever had for 15 seconds, and then uh, 16 seconds you can't taste it at all. It just tastes like you're chewing nothing, like a piece of rubber or something. You have to chew the whole pack at once, and you end up with like a ball that big when you're done. And a dislocated you know. and a dislocated jaw. <laughs> Right. You're like Gerald Henderson. You need to have a big frickin' neck brace on after you finish your fruit striped gum pack. Before we move on to the next segment, since you said that was the last sports story, you brought yeah. up the baby face and hill thing. So I'm going to tell my embarrassing story about how I turned hill. I, I started wrestling as a baby face named Flash LaRue. <clears throat> and we were putting on a show in my hometown in front of my dad's business, who had been there for like 20 years. He was a staple of the community, still is to this day. And I come out with my with my good guy music, my face paint, and I get booed in my hometown. 
in front of my dad's business. So apparently I was born to be a hill. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that was that was my lowest moment. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did they boo you? You weren't even supposed to be uh, prop, like, propped up to be a heel? Like you weren't placed? <laughs> Why'd they boo you? I guess because I was trying too hard to be a, a good guy or something. It just didn't oh. fit. I had face paint on. I'm like, come on, everybody. Yeah, you know, trying to get the crowd worked up, and they just weren't having it yet. So you're like the Rocky Maivia. It, like, yeah, they just die, they didn't Josh. want any part of you. Die, Joshy, mm-hmm. die. So VIP was born that night. I ended up embracing it, told him to kiss my ass, uh, became Victor Ivan Price, the VIP. That turned into just VIP. I, I was going to use it as initials. Then I just dropped that and did VIP Josh LaRue. Then MVP showed up on WWE, and everybody accused me of copying MVP, even though I was VIP before he was MVP. Yeah. And uh, eventually I was healed so long that people turned me face like uh, they did with Randy Orton. Uh, he had been healed. You remember when he was healed so long, people just started cheering him back in like 2010 or so. That's, that's happened multiple times with people, with wrestlers though. Like Stone Cold, when he first became a baby face, it was yeah. like, he was so over as a heel that they're like, we love this guy. This, oh, this no, is what, the guy. What I meant was that it, <clears throat> what happened to me, the crowd turning me face happened at the same time it happened to Randy Orton. Like, uh, it was like 2009. Right okay. Before my back injury. Ruthless uh, aggression era. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Okay. People booed me so long, sung along in my music, you know, you suck and everything. Yeah. Well, that's... They had fun with it. Hey, we're talking about wrestling right now, and I'm glad you are, because we're going to go from sports, and we're going to go into wrestling right now. Okay. Uh, All right. Before we go, be sure, guys, click... No, don't click it right now. Finish watching us, of course. But when you're done, go to that link, uh, into the AM forward slash, slash tracks. Get your 10% off on top of the bundles they offer, Okay. Check it out, guys. You're going to love their designs. And now my favorite, favorite discussion of the night, pro wrestling. Uh, yeah, we're going into pro wrestling. You know what's funny is, like, pro wrestling is just an extension of the sports segment of the show. Uh, it's like a love-hate thing for you. It's like a compliment sandwich. It's like you get through the crap part just so you can get to this part. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's half crap, half, I don't know, peanut butter and jelly for me. So I'm yeah. I, I don't hate sports. I've been I've been attacked in the comments before. Like, what's wrong with sports, man? I just I don't know a lot about sports. Okay, but that's I why know you have me about pro wrestling. Yeah, that's why you have me? Whichever yeah. way, whichever side you're on when this gets edited. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So, first wrestling story of the night, other than the stuff we talked about that wasn't planned. Uh, okay. May May nineteenth was the 26-year anniversary of the Clicks Curtain Call at, yeah. the, at the Madison Square Garden House show. So the, the Curtain Call, if you guys don't aren't familiar with it, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, Diesel, Triple H, all got together, baby faces and heels at the end of the match, all had a big hug, big kiss, and uh, celebrated their time working together in the WWF before Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, Razor Ramon and Diesel left to get their big money contracts with the WCW. Kayfabe was already dead, man. I'm that, sorry. A, it was officially dead, though. That was like, officially, we're pissing on Kayfabe. It's dead. We don't care what you think. And Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, that's fine. They're going to WCW. Triple H and Shawn Michaels were the ones who had to stay and deal with the repercussions of that, by the way. And, and he really couldn't take it out on Shawn Michaels because Shawn Michaels was, like, was heading he, up everything. So Triple H took the blunt of it. He lo- he was supposed to be king of the ring or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yes. And he they pushed him down the card. I think they fed him to the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania uh, yeah, 12. That's what saved Stone Cold. If, if they had not done the curtain call, Stone Cold would not have won king of the ring, would not have done the Austin 316 thing. And he might have went down in history as the ringmaster getting fired in 1996, you know. But if that didn't kill kayfabe, I think wrestling with shadows would have. Well, you know what's crazy about that whole uh, curtain call thing is it was at a house show. Um, the people that saw it, a house a house show, if you guys don't know, is uh, like a wrestling show that's not televised. Okay, so... The only reason there's even images of them hugging in the ring is because someone at the time filmed it, uh, like with a camera or something, like a yeah. like a camcorder or something, which is totally illegal. So the fact that he 
it, back then it was. And I think I don't think you can film footage now with your phone. They tell you not to. Nowadays, um, house shows for WWE are used as like their weekend programming. You know, uh, like, like, a, like like superstars and all that other stuff. Yeah, main like, event. Yeah, 215. 205 Live. Uh, the, yeah, that, the that's all. Uh, I said 215. <laughs> oh, my God. I cannot believe I said 215. Yes, 205 Live. Those yeah. kind of shows. That's yeah, they do, they do all their house show stuff, uh, you know, off TV or whatever. But so it's it's amazing that it was even shown or it even got out, to be honest with you. But I just I just think that at around that time, I think Vince had gone in fully into the we're entertainment, even though the name of the company hadn't changed yet. So it's kind of like he's he's punishing he's he's punishing Triple H for something that was already kind of like an open secret. Yeah, because he wasn't hiding anything. I don't know. What, what's your what's your thoughts on that? Do you think they should have did it or, or not done it? it? It was changing, you know. I mean, it's not like a bunch of people in the crowd went, "Wait, what? This isn't this isn't real," you know. I'm yeah. sure it was. I bet it, it it got a better reaction with them doing that than if they hadn't, you know. And it really showed the changing of the tides in the pro wrestling world. And Vince had already done some funky stuff with with house shows because yeah nowadays the house shows become their pro you know their C D E and F programming but back then it never aired on TV at all maybe call a C M home video and get a few matches or something but uh, when Bret Hart won the championship from Ric Flair in 1992 in Saskatoon uh, yeah that was a, a house, house show. show. That was on a house show. So Vince had yeah. done some funky stuff with house shows. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I think they were friends. You know, they knew that they were they were splitting up. And it, it, if Vince isn't going to show Brett beating Ric Flair, they didn't think it was ever going to see the light of day. You know, so they thought um, they were safe. Nash, actually, as Diesel, beat Bob Backlund at a Madison Square Garden house show for the title. He, like, uh, that's how he won his first and only WWF championship. He like big, le- big boot to the face and a jackknife in like eight seconds or something. Wasn't it like nine, 10 seconds or something yeah, like it's that? It's so stupid. Why did Vince do house show uh, heavyweight title changes? I don't, maybe it was a Coliseum home video agreement or something. I don't know. I had heard Bruce Pritchard had said on his podcast that they would do house show title changes because they wanted fans to think that anything could happen at a house show. They didn't want you to think that nothing big, could happen like they wanted you to go into the house show thinking like something big could happen so you'd spend your money they would do that every once in a while i can see that psychology uh the young rock show is right now just ended season two spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't seen it the whole uh plot of the show is in the year 2032 dwayne johnson is running for president and he's doing an interview each episode, he's talking to this guy, telling like how his everyday, <clears throat> like everyday situations, reminds him of something from his past. And then we'll get a we'll get stories of The Rock as a seven or eight year old, whenever his dad was working the uh, indie circuit with Macho Man and uh, Iron Sheik and Andre the Giant and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes it's uh, whenever he was a teenager and his dad's career was kind of coming to an end. And he was working like the really little shows, like the really small ones. And then uh, there's a third segment you get sometimes in some episodes of him as an adult, like 19, 20, 21, where he played uh, Canadian football, didn't cut it. And it's up to the point now where he had his dark match at WWE against the Brooklyn Brawler. And you got to see who's going to play – Undertaker, Triple H, uh, Goldust, characters like that. And uh, there's a scene with him and the the guy The guy that got to play The Rock at that age looks just like The Rock looked like at that age. Mm-hmm. And he comes out wearing that really crappy Rocky Maivia costume. Remember yeah, when he first the, debuted? He had, like, tassels <laughs> hanging off his arms. He was, like, blue. He had a pineapple haircut. He sits down next to a guy, and it's Steve Austin when he's still the ringmaster. And he's like, uh, I think I'm getting fired. I think I'm getting fired tonight, you know. 
Um, so that, that, that was about the King of the Ring. Stone Cold wasn't supposed to win the King of the Ring tournament. Yeah. Uh, but if he had, if, if they had not done what they did, Kevin Nash and all them, history of wrestling would be so different right now. Uh, we wouldn't have Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, Triple H would have won that King of the Ring. And Austin 316, all that kind of stuff wouldn't have happened. It, it, there's probably like another universe, you know, where that went that way. I, it's just... Well, on that same thought process, uh, I'll say one more thing on that. Um, had Bret Hart never got screwed by Vince and Sean at Survivor Series 97... You never would have had the heel Vince McMahon character, which eventually feuded with Stone Cold, which eventually led to the biggest, biggest ratings and the biggest storylines in WWF history. So, like, all that weird crap that happened had to happen yeah. for it to end up the way it is now, where Vince is a multi-billionaire and basically think, can do anything he wants. I don't think Brett, I think, I don't think Brett would have let them take advantage of Owen to make him the Blue Blazer. If he had stuck around, if he was behind the scenes, they would have had. I don't know that. I know that they. What I had heard about the Blue Blazer thing was that they made him the Blue Blazer because they kept feeding him storylines that were immoral to Owen Hart personally. He didn't want to have an affair on camera with Deborah. Uh, He didn't want to do on screen kisses with people. He's married. He didn't want to do it. He just wanted to wrestle. Okay. He didn't mind being a heel, but he didn't want to actually do stuff that he thought was. Uh, you know, just contrary to who he was as a human being with his wife and his kids and stuff. So the, eventually, after he had turned down like five or six storylines, they're like, well, why don't you just become the Blue Blazer again? And he'd already said no to six other things. So he's like, that's the lesser of all the evils. I'll do it. Okay. Right? Yeah. But I but I, I agree with you. I don't think he would have ever ended up with uh, storyline D, D, E, F, G, H, whatever, the Blue Blazer again. Because if Brett was still around, they could have put the Hart Foundation together again. They could have did anything. I mean, they could have done a ton of stuff other than that. So no, I'm glad, I don't... That, I'm glad his wife is letting like AEW honor him. Yeah, with the tournament, you know? the, the Owen Hart tournament yeah. that they just. Yeah. Uh, speaking of AEW, my next and last wrestling story of the night: uh, CM Punk just won the AEW World Championship this weekend. Uh, he defeated had, uh, Hangman Adam Page at AEW's Double or Nothing. It was in the main event, and it's CM Punk's first world championship reign since 2013. Wow. What are your thoughts on that? Decade, man. Almost a decade. That's amazing. I always liked the Cookie Monster Punk. I really did. Um, I liked his uh, pipe bomb moments, you know, in his segments. Yeah. I love that he forced WWE's hand because uh, he, I don't know, I just, I'm glad he gave AEW a shot. I really am. And I'm glad that he's getting the recognition he deserves. He's an amazing athlete. He might he might be a bigger star in his own head than he actually is. But uh, I don't know, man. He he moves the needle with a lot of people. Uh, he he's pretty popular, and he's no, no, very. I, I'm not I'm not saying he's not. I'm just saying like. Sometimes he gets a little too cocky with it, is all I'm saying. I'm not saying it's not earned cockiness, but uh, I, I don't. He can be a little more humble. He's, but def- he's, de- he's definitely got a personality where if you're not on Team Punk, you can just F off. Like, yeah. I, I totally see that. And also, I think that being in that business, being, him being a smaller guy, him coming from the Indies. I love it. Shawn Michaels and all these guys were trying to cut his legs out from underneath him. Triple H openly did not like him when he came out. They were, like, trying to get rid of him, just like they did with The Rock, by the way. Uh, News alert, breaking news. Triple H and Shawn Michaels tried to get rid of The Rock and screw him over politically when he first started. Um, But I digress. CM Punk, uh, you know, when he walked out of WWE and he was hurt and he was tired, he had that staph infection – uh, they said he was going to be in, like, the Marine 4 or whatever, and then they pulled the rug out from him, under him on that. And then they finally fired him on his wedding day of yeah, all days. Yeah, that was horrible. Yeah. Um, it's nice to see him come full circle, and he actually genuinely looks happy in the ring. He looks like he's having a really good time, and uh, I really like to see it. I'm just – it makes me nervous. Uh, it's like, well, what's going to piss him off, and he's going to walk out on AEW? It's just I have that in the back of my head for some reason. 
because Cookie Monster Punk. He's yeah, gonna, I don't, he's gonna drop the pipe bomb on AEW one night on Tony Khan. <laughs> just out of nowhere. I've had it. This belt is a stupid design. I I don't like the AEW World Title Belt, by the way. I, I don't right. like any of the belts, man. On no. any of the shows, the tag team belts suck. I don't, I don't like Tom that belt. Tom, the United States. Uh, my favorite belt of all time was the WCW United States Championship for some reason. And the really? Wing, and the Winged Eagle WWF title. Hey. Uh, those are my favorites. Who, uh, here's a trivia question. Who was the last person to hold the WCW uh, United States Championship belt? Uh, You'll never get it. It's not Bret Hart. Um, the WCW version? Yes. Like in the company WCW? Yes. Was it Lance Storm? No. Um, can I give you a hint? Okay. Vince Russo. <laughs> yeah, Vince Russo. I'm going to put myself over for the United States. No, it's not Vince Russo. Brother. Bro. It is. Uh, okay. He was on an episode of Harry and the Hendersons, the TV show. Uh, Roddy Piper? I don't know. You're close. Um, he was in Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies. Oh, the guy I hate, the main guy, Shane no, Douglas? No. Hacksaw Jim Duggan? Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Wow. The okay, only I remember title... him getting the TV title out of the trash can. Dude, only but... title I ever remember Hacksaw ever winning. He well, he won the United States title from Stunning Steve Austin in, like, 95. I think he was the last person to have the WCW United States Championship. Like when they closed? Yes, like right when they were getting ready to close, like 2001, 2002. Not the, t- not the TV title, the U.S. Well, title. now you're going to make me look stupid because now I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. Yeah, now I'm not sure. Um, let's get into some spooky horror news. Let's segue okay. from my stupidity. Now I'm not sure. <laughs> now I look all cocky like CM Punk. I have no idea. Hey, if you guys know the answer to that, did Hacksaw have... The United States title, which I think it was, or did he have the TV title, which Josh thinks it was? In I think he percent. took the TV title out of the trash can, and that's whenever he was the last TV title holder. That's what I think. That's how he got the belt? He took it out of the trash can? Yeah. Uh, Scott uh, <laughs> si- uh, Scott Hall or Six or somebody had thrown it away. And, <laughs> like, two years later, he found it in a trash can and an arena that wasn't even the same arena where they threw the belt away. It just happened to be in that trash can. <laughs> that what? was I- the- I thought that Hacksaw had won the United States Championship for WCW, and, like, they just closed the company, so he just had the belt. Like, but I might be wrong. Okay, well, I, I'm just saying he was the last TV t- TV champion. I know that for a fact. Because well, then that's probably... Well, that's probably what it was then. It's probably not the United they closed. States. That was before they closed. Holy but, yeah. moly. Um, yeah. All right, so li- I've been wanting to tell you this story. I'm sure you've seen it. I've I've literally, ever since... We did uh, Action News number seven. I found this story like a couple days later. I've wanted to talk about this story for okay. weeks. Okay. First spooky horror theme story of the episode. Winnie the, Plo- Winnie the Pooh, blood, blood and honey. The hunt cur- for blood and honey. Whatever. The, the hunt for blood and honey is currently in the works. Yeah. Uh, Winnie uh, entered public domain in January of 2022, so this is not going to be a movie by Disney. Uh, it's going to follow. <laughs> it's going to follow Pooh and Piglet going on a rampage after Christopher Robin goes away to college. It's uh, made Pooh and Piglet's life extremely difficult, and they don't know how to deal with it. So they're going to go on an old-fashioned killing spree, all a natural-born killers. But it's Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. Piglet with tusks and. Dude, uh... Eeyore, I think they ate Eeyore or an owl or something. How the hell do you know plot points already when the movie is in production? Because I read a story or something somewhere. Like, like uh, one of the story plot lines is that they ate some of the characters they can't use or something. I don't know. <laughs> Apparently the book is public domain, but a couple of the characters are, you know, not, I don't know. It's This, this is the movie. That absolutely nobody asked for. <laughs> I don't want this movie made. There's a nuclear grizzly out there out there about to write a negative comment saying, you don't speak for me, Alex. I don't want them to make Winnie the Pooh a killer. I literally love Winnie the Pooh. 
I had yeah. all the stuff, stuff, you know, animals when I was a kid. My mom, I grew up in the, we grew up in the 80s. Like Winnie the Pooh flashed, you know, here's a flashing breaking news. Uh, I'm so old that Winnie the Pooh didn't come with a red shirt. He was just naked. <laughs> like they didn't even have the shirt combo when you bought the stuffed animal when I was a kid. So my mom made a red shirt for him, like sewed Dude, it for him. I went as Christopher Robin on Imagination Day at yeah. school for Spirit Week, uh, carrying a Winnie the Pooh. I used to love Welcome to Pooh Corner, the live action Winnie the Me Pooh too. show. Yeah, I don't. Is that on Disney Plus yet? Because I'd love to watch an old episode. It's kind of like Dumbo Circus. I don't know if it is. I, is here's a question: Is Alice in Wonderland on Disney Disney Plus, the live action one? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Because I I also I like that show a lot too. They had like remember, Alice. Do you remember the non Disney Alice through the Looking Glass uh, from the eighties? No. With the dragon that comes through the th- window or mm-hmm. the mirror at the end. Mm-hmm. Damn, that was a good one. No, I I was all Alice in Wonderland, the live action, like early 90s. They had like a, like the, one of them was a rapper. Like Tweedledee and Tweedledum were rappers, like breakdancers. Yeah. Um, at the Johnny Depp thing or something? Not Johnny Depp. But no, uh, no, no. This is like a TV show. And they had like. Oh, okay. No, I don't know about that. Um. Well, in the comments, if you guys remember the Alice in Wonderland uh, Disney live action show from the early 90s, uh, let us know if you like that show, if you have any memories of it. I just remember watching it after school and like really enjoying it. It always had really good educational moments. Um, Here's a little fun fact about that Alice in Wonderland uh, show. Um, O.J. Simpson was in an episode that they filmed. It was in the can. O.J. Simpson, okay, himself, alleged double murderer, uh, O.J. Simpson, they filmed it around 93, 94, before the murder took place. And one of the characters in the show wanted to meet O.J. Simpson, right? So O.J. showed up on in Wonderland and met one of the characters. Well, they had to, like, put the episode away forever. It's never aired. Ever. So Let there's an episode it. of, yeah, there's an episode of O.J. Simpson floating around in Disney's vault. Where he meets Alice and the Mad Hatter and the Caterpillar and stuff. It's and the the bunny and everything. It's crazy. I'd love to see that, man. That'd be yeah, crazy. Yeah, he eats one of the little mushrooms or whatever, and he's like, I just can't fit through the door. I can't fit. If it doesn't fit <laughs> You yeah. must have quit. Yeah. If if it doesn't fit, you're full of shit. <laughs> Alice. When he loved who when he loved who Yeah, he so, just ate Alex and Josh LaRue. When he the poo. Dude. I do I want the Winnie the Pooh horror movie to be made? No. Am I gonna go watch it? Yes. <laughs> yes, I will. Um let's get into the second and last spooky story of the episode. Okay. All right. Stranger Things, season four just premiered. Uh everybody's talking no, no spoilers at all. Okay. No spoilers okay. at all. Uh this what I, so no spoilers. All I'm going to bring up is a uh, fact about it, and uh, everybody is talking about how um, the Duffer brothers are basically paying homage to a lot of 80s and 90s horror movies with some of the things they do with this season. So particularly Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Robert England, hit Freddy himself, plays Victor Creel in the this season, um, and th- there's a Freddy cutout in the video store. Sweet. And yeah, some of the kids talk about Freddy Krueger and stuff. But um, yeah, there's a there's an homage to Nightmare on Elm Street. It's got some like uh, dark kind of slasher undertones. It's different than previous seasons. But the fun, the fact that I want to talk about is there's a scene where one of the characters, uh, her favorite song is you know save. Well, spoiler alert: the favorite song saves her in one of the scenes, and the song is called "Running Up That Hill." And it's by Kate Bush, and it was an, uh, it's actually just hit number one on iTunes. Wow. So that song, when it was first released in 1985, only charted, it peaked at number 30 on the Billboard, you know, Hot 100s or whatever back in 1985. So yeah. Stra- Stranger Things in 2022 is such a popular and such a big hit for Netflix that it made an artist from 1985 have a number one hit today like literally like 40 years later didn't that happen in season one with should i stay or should i go i don't know i don't know i would have sworn i heard something and another interesting fact about the new season is like they said it's season four part one Uh, but part two 
is only two episodes, but they're like feature length uh, episodes, like hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes long. Okay. And then season five will be the final season. Uh, some people were confused thinking that like when they said season five was the final season, that meant that the season four part two was going to be it. But no, yeah. there's going to be two, two more episodes being dropped in a few months and then they'll do a whole new season. That will be the final season of uh, stranger things. Um, before we uh, jump into the final segment of the show. Yeah. Uh, once again, thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring the show. We love the shirts, and we uh, we think our audience is going to as well. Take another look, guys. There's some amazing stuff here. So many things to choose from. Bundle up three graphic tees for 60 bucks. And use the 10% off link right there in the description, in the pinned comments. Check this out. We'll be right back. All right, so Josh, we are going to move in to the last uh, last segment of the night. We're going to get into some headlines. What do you think? You're always talking about headlines. I don't know what your fascination is, but sure, let's do it. What is your fascination with dad jokes? You're the one who would be holding up the line in grade school when they yeah. check for head lice. Yeah. That lady, would be, the nurse, would be running multiple combs through your hair. There's no way she's going to check your entire scalp in one pass-through, pal. <laughs> You're the one who's holding up the line when I'm supposed to be going to PE or recess or lunch. And it's all because of you and that mane of yours, dude. I know, I know. Just flaunt so what's it, the dude. headline? So all, right, all right, all right. I, I blacked out. I was mesmerized for a second. I was staring at your hair. All right, check this out. In Beaverton, Oregon, my state, Oregon, uh, thief returns after stealing a woman's car and actually yells at her for leaving her four-year-old son alone in the vehicle. <laughs> so this thief steals this lady's car, uh, and then he, he takes off with the car and then realizes that there's a four-year-old in the back car seat, you know, because kids are supposed to be in their car seat in the back. Uh, Crystal Leary... Uh, ran into a meat market for only a couple minutes to get some meat for dinner and came outside and realized her car was gone. Well, in the moments that she realized the car was gone, the man actually pulled back into the parking lot and uh, like verbally like just abused her and said, listen, I can't believe that you left your baby in the back of the car while you're going to the store. Uh, I could call the police on you right now. That's child neglect. <laughs> he lectured her. Made her take the child out of the car seat, and then pr after you know, for he's saying he's going to call the cops and like making her feel like a piece of crap, he drives off and steals her car again. This has happened. This is a true story. Well, this I, happened in Beaverton, Oregon. What do you think about well, this? This is this may be the great, greatest story we've ever told on the show. It is. At least he at least he returned the kid, right? You know. I um, guess, man. It, did he wait? <laughs> like, okay. Uh... Like, was it like a male Karen? Like, oh, my God. They left Gosh. their kid in the car. <laughs> you know, I don't just have to be a car thief. I don't a car thief with a conscious, apparently. I, I seriously have never heard of anything like this before, seen anything like this before. This is a slash tra slash tracks action news first. That is <laughs> the greatest story we've ever had on the show. You had freaking nuclear grizzly bear. Uh, you dropped that freaking gem on the show today and then we have the car thief who lectures the woman who went in to get some meat for dinner that night and left her car in the back and then he lectures her and then steals the car again <laughs> and then the she and then after the situation is over she's the one who feels like a piece of crap concerned yeah, car have, thief citizen yeah, i shouldn't have left saves that saves the day yeah. steals the car he got I, he saved the day and he got the car so yeah, yeah. He, he's a hero slash asshole uh speaking of assholes uh and curse words because this is my segue to the next story samuel l jackson has recently been cast alongside chris Pl chris platt pratt say that five times fast in okay. the new gar in chris the new pratt, gar chris pratt chris pratt chris pratt chris pratt god oh. i i'm horrible 
Uh, they've been cast in the new Garfield movie coming up. Samuel L. Jackson is actually going to play a new character. He's going to be Garfield's father, Vic. What are your thoughts on Samuel L. Jackson getting cast as Garfield's dad? I have a few hey, thoughts. I thought Bill Murray was contractually obligated to be in a third movie. You know, as much as he regrets the first two. Okay. B, are we sure that John didn't accidentally forget to leave out the lasagna, so Garfield is going on, like, a murder spree with Odie? Oh, like no. This? Are we sure? That's, that's not what this movie is about. They're going to kill Nermal. They're going to they're gonna go kill Nermal. They did shipping her to Abu Dhabi didn't work, so they're going to... Was Nermal... Do you remember Nermal? Was that a boy cat or a girl cat, first of all? I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was a girl cat. It's going to yeah, be Garfield, the hunt for Mondays and blood or something. I don't know. <laughs> My first thought when I heard of Samuel L. Jackson being cast as Garfield's dad was a scene in which Samuel L. Jackson is lecturing Garfield about his lasagna consumption. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? You can't be... No son of mine is going to be eating all that motherfucking lasagna. I'm tired of all this motherfucking Mondays and motherfucking lasagnas. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm tired of all these motherfucking lasagnas and all these motherfucking beds on all these fucking Mondays. <laughs> there you go. There's the final. There's the, that's, that's the Oscar winning scene. The fantasy. Go. The fantasy Oscar winning scene. Not but the real have- Oscars. The fantasy Oscars. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, what Josh and I did right there, well, that's basically how we come up with these episodes. We just bounce weird crap off each other until something sticks. Um, so, hold on, I gotta find. Okay, here's here's a quick here's a quick headline. Uh, in Florida, uh, our everyone's favorite state to go visit. Florida is known for some crazy stories. A uh, 42 year old bride and her 31 year old caterer were recently arrested after allegedly lacing the wedding food. With marijuana. Uh, So the bride, the bride uh, authorized the caterer, like, you know, go ahead and you can put THC or like oil, hash oil or whatever in all the food. And what happened was, uh, and what the food, the entree, Josh, that had a lot of the weed in was lasagna, by the way. (laughs) So Garfield must have been in attendance. But uh, anyway, a lot of the guests of the wedding started complaining that they felt high that they felt weird, their body was vibrating. Some of the people actually ended up going to the hospital because they thought they were having, like, allergic reactions because they're stoned out of their mind because the bride they, they and think the caterer, everybody's a cop. <laughs> dude, so, like, some of the people, like, felt high, and they ended up going to the hospital, and they got, you know, they tested positive for THC. So the lady and the bride are actually facing charges of uh, culpable negligence, delivery of marijuana and violating Florida's anti-tampering act. So <laughs> the bride, well, you know, she's getting arrested for just trying to facilitate a good time, man. It backfired big time. All I can think is like her, she has like uptight parents that are like, I feel high. How do you know what being high feels like mom? I, uh, yeah. Well, your dad over there is just stoned off his ass. <laughs> Not that after he had two helpings of lasagna, he looks like he's in outer space right now. And speaking of outer space, Josh, my tank top from Into the AM has an outer space it. motif. I love it. <laughs> look at that, man. Look at how vibrant those colors are. That'd be pretty neat to stare at if you were having some of that lasagna at the wedding, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The lasagna was tasty. Uh, yeah, I ended that... up eating like 10 times my share, though. I don't know that... why. Dude, that lasagna at that wedding is super dangerous, too. Not only for your sanity, because you're high and you don't even realize you're high, so you think you're going crazy, but also for your waistline. Because when you're eating, when you're high, the first thing you want to do is eat more. But they're going to eat more, and it has more weed in it. So you're just getting higher and higher. So you're just going to the buffet line like 11 times, and by the 11th trip, you're dead. You know, because of this wedding, the song Higher and Higher from the 80s, is topping the charts. Yeah, right now. We we have Stranger Things power, boys and girls. Um, let's get into the last last story of the night, man. What do you think? Let's do it. All right. I got so, some wheat place lasagna to get to. Norm McDonald, uh recent or not recently, he shot a secret final Netflix stand up special yep. before he passed away. And it's actually streaming today, Monday. It it, it was released today, so it's on Netflix. Uh, 
On the afternoon of June 28, 2020, Norm Macdonald decided to film uh, what turned out to be his last stand-up special, and it's not in front of anybody. It's crowdless. It has no yeah. nobody in attendance. It's just him and his agent or whoever filming it. So it was the night before he was set to have a stem cell transplant at the City of Joy uh, Medical Center. Um, he was set to have the stem cell transplant um, because his cancer that had been in remission for seven years had actually returned. Yeah. So, and around that same time, COVID, the pandemic had just kind of started to really get bad. So he had two things going against him. So he's cancer's back. He's going to have the stem cell uh, transplant and COVID is happening. So uh, lockdowns, there's not, nobody's doing anything. He's not going to any comedy special because people weren't even allowed to go to grocery shop barely so yeah. there weren't going to be any big groups or crowds watching his stand-up special so norm decided if i pass away i'm gonna i'm gonna film this stand-up special and i think this is one last beautiful gift that he gave all of his fans and also i think it's really interesting josh because i've never in my entire life seen anything like this before or since yeah a, a brand new stand-up special with all new material from norm mcdonald a great comedian, like a great person. Yeah. Uh, that it's like one last gift to the fans. I think it's amazing. He was he was the uncancelable, sir, sir, uncancelable. I can't. How do you say uncancelable? You know, I can't even read my own handwriting, Josh. Uh, you could not cancel yeah. this man. He was the one person that cancel culture couldn't touch. You know, he said it like it was. He was. He had the surgery, and I think the exact quote was. He told them, in case things go south, I want this done. And he did it in one take. Like, during it, you can hear his dog barking. And you can, his cell phone goes off, and he gets on the cell phone, and he's like, hey, uh, I'm, uh, I'm filming a Netflix special. I'm going to I'm gonna have to call you back. <laughs> <laughs> in my living room right now. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I haven't seen the whole thing. I started watching it, but I, I got a little emotional. But I'm going to finish it. But it, it's it's awesome that we got that. We don't, you know, yeah. we, it, I wish Bob Saget had done something similar. You know, I wish we could have this for all of them. Robin Williams, everybody. Gilbert, uh, all, everybody. Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah. Um, I was going to say um, one thing about Norm MacDonald. His, like, his delivery his like sense of humor was so different than like any other comedian that I'd ever seen. It was like, so like, Hey, uh, Hey, uh, yeah. Hey, uh, you don't want that to happen because you know, <laughs> y you know what I'm talking about? It was just yeah, so, yeah. and I remember, um, watching Saturday night live and he would just rip OJ Simpson apart. Every he hosted uh weekend update on SNL. So yeah, the best, but yeah, he was awesome, by the way. Uh, and he, his deliveries and his wit and everything. But he would just tear O.J. Simpson apart. And uh, apparently he ended up getting fired from SNL because he got a note from the producers of the show. They're like, you need to stop. You need to stop now. We, we're done with the O.J. jokes. You just need to stop. And instead of stopping, he just doubled down and, yeah. and did more. And he yeah. got fired for it. He got yep. fired for that. He died on the O.J. Simpson hill. <laughs> Yeah, okay. there's vi there's videos of Norm on YouTube that people, uh, fans have put together. It's like an hour of Norm ripping O.J. Simpson apart. So if you guys have time in your day to check that out, try to find that on YouTube. It's like Norm McDonald on O.J. Simpson or whatever. It's like an hour of him just tearing O.J. apart. They're all hilarious. And watch the special on Netflix. It's called Norm McDonald, Nothing Special. It's great. It's great yeah. stuff. Well, I think that's it for the show, Josh. I think that's a wrap for us on episode eight. This is Josh LaRue saying thanks for watching. Be excellent to each other. Good night. Have a pleasant tomorrow. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dog. There you go. And be sure to go into the am.com forward slash slash tracks. Like it says below, 10% off your purchase. Great bundles. Please check it out. Support Into the AM. Support us. Check out our Patreon as well. And we will see you next time.